How's it going guys? It's Kamalu again. Um, we're gonna be talking about four different breaks here on the island. Uh, I guess we might as well start off with the one right here, Waimea Bay. Um, Waimea Bay, in my opinion, is best on, a, I'd say a low, uh, like a dropping tide, lower medium-ish tide. Um, you kind of want to catch it early in the morning. That's because the wind's feeding through the valley. Um, and the cool thing is about the North Shore and about Waimea is if the winds are coming in heavy, like side winds, anywhere else, say you're up at Pipeline, you're up at um, Sunset, and the winds are whipping heavy across, you can actually come to Waimea and the valley will channel the wind out towards the break. And you'll actually see there's some instances where the flags down there will be blowing across, but then the flags here will be blowing out. And that makes for some weird but amazing barrels and um Waimea is just close out central it's big it's heavy it's thick um dangerous spot but then again I wouldn't have it any other way it teaches you so much about control how to make drops how to make double up drops um Waimea is not a place for beginners but as somebody who's learned here I can tell you that if you learn here with the proper guidance, you'll kill it. I mean, Kaylee grew up here. This is his original home break. Like, he loved this spot. And then here in Keiki's, and that's another spot too. That's another spot that I love. That is probably more deadly than Waimea. Definitely more deadly than Waimea. It's a straight onshore break. There's no reef in between you and just deep ocean channel. At least here at Waimea, you have a little bit of um, buffer being the, the outside. Um, they'll catch the waves a little bit and buffer up that, that heaviness just a little bit or buffer up the, the heaviness of the wave, slow it down a little bit, give it less power. Um, but at Keiki, Keiki is just a straight shelf. Right on the outside of Shark's Cove is a steep drop off shelf. And what will happen is the waves will just come in straight, hit that um, shore break, and you just have straight open open ocean swell hitting shore. <laughs> and just, there's nothing to stop it. There's nothing at all. You don't have to try, the waves don't have to travel as far as they do, like in places like California. That's why we get quite a bit more, or our waves are a lot more heavier is because we have nothing stopping our waves. They don't have to travel as far as, there's more momentum in them and that's why places like Keiki is just as soon as it hits just a little bit of sand you're talking about all that moving momentum just standing straight up and then throwing over and that's where you get those beautiful pictures because that wave is just vertical hollow big deadly and fun though but it is sketchy I won't lie it's one of the spots that I'll look at and be like is it a good day to go is it not like it's a spot you really have to judge and take your time and kind of know what you're doing before you go out um i think another spot that's really iconic to body surfing in hawaii has got to be also sandy's sandy's is one of those places that everybody goes to everybody's learned there um it's totally different from the north shore being as it's the um the east side of the island like southeast side literally the other side of the island but um it how would I explain Sandy's? It's a much faster break. It breaks way faster. It's not as thick as Waimea, but it drops fast. Like, almost like Waimea, and it stands up really quickly because there's always sand. Um, that's the thing you'll notice too with the difference in the South Shore and the North Shore is you're gonna have like, sand, the sand's gonna be real different. The sand on the South Shore at um, Sandy's is very rough, very hard, but it doesn't move very much and that's why it becomes like such a good body surfing spot because there's almost always a sandbar, hence the name Sandy's. Um, Sandy's I know is, has like three different breaks. There's the far left side, there's um, gas chambers. The only reason why I know that spot is because it's my favorite to shoot. Um, the most hollow waves hit gas chambers in my opinion. And then you have the middle break. The middle break is, one, is gonna be a lot more accommodable for like people who are just beginning and learning for body surfing. Um, another break that I won't talk about, but is also like right on that side is Makapu. 
um, Mangpu and Sandy's are like kind of like the beginner-ish areas of where you would want to start body surfing. Um, the North Shore, again, being another more expert place. Um, and then my, the first place that I actually got in and out is one of the best places I like for tricks and pretty much everything for body surfing. In and outs, tricks, double in and outs has got to be Point Panic. Um, the birthing place of Kahanalu, the team that I ride for, which I am so thankful to be a part of. Um, Point Panic is really just a one-way break. There's only one wave, which kind of sucks because you get like 30 other people out there. It, lineups can be crowded, but um, it's a nice slow wave. It's a little bit steep here and there. You got to kind of know how to work your wave out, way out of a wave, how to like kind of kick into a wave heavily because it's not as powerful as like these other breaks it's not like you're taking off on like sand that's about maybe three foot deep um this is you gotta remember this is like a six foot deep reef break that actually breaks perfectly all the time um it has like kiwalo basin right next to it and all the wind coming down from the war from ward whips in there and just opens that barrel up and just keeps it traveling um I've gotten a couple in and outs there, a couple double in and outs, and that's where I learned to actually become a better body surfer. If you want to learn how to do tricks like um, belly spins, spinners, rollos, and stuff like that, like once you learn how to travel on a wave at shore break and you can handle yourself, go out to Point Panic. Point Panic um, is only for body surfers. All of the uncles there, Uncle Sean, um, Uncle Barry, Kelee, for example, he might not know it, but he's an uncle now. Don't tell him <laughs> I said that. Um, they'll be, they're more than enough willing to help anybody to learn because that's our culture. We want people to learn body surfing. Body surfing is the basis of surfing. If you know body surfing and you can read the wave and ride a wave body surfing, it's a lot, e or it becomes a lot easier to stand up surf as well. It, I mean, like, you notice things as a body surfer that surfers won't even realize. Um, and yeah, and I hope you guys enjoyed this. It's been Kamalu again. Thanks for having me, Slide. <laughs>